Yo, what is up, guys? Make a video, yeah, and do a book. Not a book of you guys. Sorry, we're gonna do a wrist video between two books that actually involve time travel in the original series. Vampire Death will not be there. We are talking to talk about Nine Tier Tower and the Blue Clock Yeah, it was ironic. This is number twenty-seven. This is twenty-eight. So yeah, they're technically they're just uh, uh, one book apart. So yeah, they're technically both together. A time travel book. <laughs> And uh, yeah, as you can see, these are actually considered to be regarded as one of the best Goosebumps books ever read by every single fan. Now, not every single fan, but some people hate, some people don't really like Kukulakadum, but, but uh, yeah, just uh, just saying. Anyway, so we're gonna start the video on the story, characters, for, for, um, the time travel aspect and the conclusion. So we're gonna talk about the story. So the story for Nine Tier Tower is essentially uh, two kids uh, named Sue and Eddie visiting a, uh, a place called Terror Tower in London. Their parents are in a conference, whatever, and uh, they're pretty much having fun on the tour. But then they get lost, and then uh, and then a weird man in black. I think the man in black, whatever. Uh, although the cub. Oh, Although the, the, the cover doesn't really look like the actual execution in the book. Because as I remember, he's wearing black clothes, not green clothes. And uh, and uh, I think he wore a hat like in the episode. So yeah, I think the episode did a better representation in terms of the cover than the actual book. Uh, not saying Tim Jacobus, Tim Jacobus is a terrible artist, just saying that, um, just saying that uh, the episode did more justice in terms of how the how the guy looks uh, just like the book huh? in the cover he looks like a uh, a real scary guy but in how it's, he's described as less scarier than how less it's less scary than the ones you might think right in the cover so anyways uh, a man in black comes in and he's like come with me so he per he proceeds to chase Tetsu and Eddie around the tower and then they escape but then uh, more terrifying stuff starts to happen later which we'll talk about later. <laughs> For Cuckoo Cock of Doom, we have a big character named Michael. It's like my dad's name. So he is having a terrible time with his sister Tara, which is an awful character. I just said uh, the same. And uh, he's having trouble with his sister. He always, she always picks on him. He pretty much she pretty much ruined his twelfth birthday. He wrecked his stuff. Told, told his crush that he likes her. I mean that, that, that he likes her. And. Uh, Pretty much proceeds to destroy his cake like a man. Michael, Michael's had a really bad like years in his life. Uh, not just that, the birthday, he also ruined like uh, also uh, embarrassed. Uh, she also embarrassed Michael in front of the girls. Uh, made them a bully, beat up Michael, and uh, and pretty much uh, pretty much punched it. I think uh, cost him a black eye when he when uh, she was like two years old or something. Yeah, <laughs> this kid need. This kid needs to join Slappy because she is definitely a, a really bad girl. <laughs> so anyways, after all those bad years, Michael wants to get back at Tara, so she he pretty much sets the clock backwards so he can she can go back so she can have a back in, in trouble because um she she's always annoying him but instead of bad stuff happening to her, it happens to Michael because he goes back in time he and then his 12th birthday, the time where he gets picked on by the bully, the underwear reveal, the heart where he, punch, where he got the black eye when he was when he was two years old, stuff like that. And also when he was like a baby. That's uh, the whole plot for the story. Uh, how to get back to the future. Because it's kind of like back to the future. Funny, I just actually watched a movie uh, like a few hours ago. Speaking of back to the future, that's my favorite movie of all time. Yeah. So anyways, um, in terms of story, both books are pretty much uh, like um, all, not really the same. Just uh, have the, the same, have one aspect of similar. The time travel, which I, you know, is kind of obvious. But uh, we're gonna discuss uh, which plot is better. So if I had to choose one, uh, I'd say Nine Terror Tower gets extra point. Cold of Doom. Let's wait. Uh, let's wait. Maybe it might have a a point higher than Terror Tower. Let's see to the end of the video. But yeah, uh, so far the winner for the story is a Nine Terror Tower. Kukla Kadoom's story is pretty good, but uh, it's just the same thing like Don't Go to Sleep, where a character goes back to a period in time. It's not repetitive as Don't Go to Sleep, but it's not really as 
but much interesting as how Terra Tower plays out the story. Uh, the first half is, reminds me of Warland, the one the kids are trapped in Terra Tower, and there's pretty much these dummies and, and pretend skeletons that are pretend to be dead people, but actually they're just uh, props, props for the for the Terra Tower. Yeah. Overall, Terra Tower wins up. So let's move on with the characters. So we'll just discuss three characters in the in this book. We'll not discuss more grid Mr. Starks and the others. They really, I won't really discuss them because uh, they pretty much have only like a few scenes and they're not really that important. We're gonna talk about the main two leads and the execution. So let's talk about Aginsu. They're pretty good likable characters. Uh, I will say I think the episode version is much better that is much better in terms of the characters in the book. But uh, to me, I really enjoy the character enjoy enjoy the characters in the book. I think they're really well written, and uh, Arlstein seems to have fun with their characters. Unlike I thought, Eddie's pickpocket pickpocket things is pretty good, and this pay off towards the end when he find when they found out that he stole the pick, the stone from the executioner. Uh, Sue is also a likable protagonist, not as good as something like Lizzie or Amy Kramer, but um. But she's a pretty good uh, protagonist. Uh, nothing else to say. Just pretty good. So let's talk about the big bad executioner. And he is a really, really good villain. I really like this guy. He's really terrifying at times. Like the parts where he tries to chase the kids, parts where he tries to torture them, parts like, part where he's like, you come with me. <laughs> or even the parts in the past, like he was a pretty scary too. So yeah. I would say. Tertar is a pretty good two characters and a good villain. In Kokoka Doom, there's no villain at all. Uh, you may say the clock was the villain, but he, it's not really a villain. It's just, um, it's not really too much of a villain. I mean, the cover makes you might think it's an invasion of a clock, of a couple clock something, like the bird will become alive and something like a Revenge of the Law Gnomes or Living Dummy story. But no, it's actually completely different. Uh, we remain part. Anyway, so let's discuss the characters. So Michael is a pretty good protagonist. He's actually one of my favorite, he's favorites. He's actually re really relatable. I don't have siblings at all, but um, I think he's a really good, re relatable character. Even though I don't have siblings, but yeah, I can relate to his situation with his stupid sister. St speaking of the stu stupid sister, I'll talk about Terra Terrible. And oh my gosh, if I, I would have to point out the number one worst, prota the worst, um, a character in Goosebumps, it'd be Terra. Because she is so annoying. And, that's why I never read this book in a long, long time. Till recently. Because she makes the book uh, not really rereadable for me. She is so annoying. It's like, man, this girl needs to be in jail ready. Yeah, and also the parents don't make too much better because every time uh, Michael tells uh, the parents that uh, Tara did something, they're all on her side. They're like, Michael, I think. Uh, you're having too much imagination. I mean, there's a scene where they talk about Michael's imagination, about that uh, how much um, how much he can, he pretty much fakes out that uh, um, about Tara, Tara doing everything, and his parents actually think that he did. It's like wow, parents. I mean, even the flashbacks where Michael gets tripped over and it's apparent, and it's his mom's thing there. Um, uh, not the usual like say thing like Michael are you okay? But she's like Michael what. Were what, Michael, next time, watch where you go. Like, wow, Michael surely has some bad parents. Well, the first five years, um, he did have good parents until Tara came along. Bad Tara and parents. So, the, his friends, you want to talk about them, Mona CC. They don't really serve too much of a purpose, and we'll just uh, delete them off the story because they don't serve too much of a purpose. Uh, they're just there for flashbacks, and that's really it. So, yeah, that's all I can say for the characters. Michael's got a good character, the other characters are pretty annoying. You may say, oh, that's the point, they're supposed to be bad characters. But um, but uh, to me, they're way... Also, it makes the bad characters a bit way too much hateable for me. It's like, wow. So much child abuse. I mean, yes, uh, you, you can pay attention to Tara all you want, but, but you have to pay attention to your son too. You can't just pay attention to one sibling. So anyways, so finish with the characters. And now, obviously, Tara Tara wins out. Kogaku Doom obviously means this. So let's go on with the horror. So the horror, so I think the horror in Terra Tower is actually pretty well written. Uh, the main horror in the book is escaping the executioner. Like the parts where he chases the Eddie and Sue in the tower, or the parts at the past, when Sue and Eddie travel to the past with the executioner with the stones. 
Yeah, I told you he's a creepy villain, but there's something else that's uh, pretty creepy. The parts where I used to realize that uh, they they um, can't remember anything. The parts in the hotel. That's the part where I talk about when I meant the horror. Like the parts where where the clerk asks them about their last names so that uh, they can find their parents, but I didn't say don't remember their last names. I thought, it's pretty creepy actually. Uh, imagine you being in their situation. You'd be, be, oh my god, what am I gonna do? <laughs> like that. You have that situation too, right? So yeah, the horrors in Terra Tower are pretty well effective. Uh, some of the stuff in the Terra Tower is actually pretty well actually written in terms of terror. So yeah, overall Terra Tower, of course, is a terrifying book. <laughs> Not really terrifying, but definitely one of the creepier ones. Uh, remember my Don't Go to Sleep video where I, where I said a guy uh, pretty much said that Don't Go to Sleep is one of the scariest? Well, this one and Terror Tower are actually one of the uh, uh, scariest uh, books. I'll link the video in the description if you want to watch the video. Uh, it's not from my channel, it's from another guy's channel. I forgot the, na the channel's name, but I'll just link the video in the description. So anyway, so the horror in Kobo Kadoom is also pretty so scary too. Uh, there's no villain, and uh, it doesn't really need to have have a villain. And uh, the whole story is actually kind of scary. Uh, you watch Michael relive all the uh, relive all the horrible horrible events. They also do a Back to the Future Final Destination type thing where they try to, uh, like say, fix some fix the bad stuff, uh, but um, it doesn't work. Like the part where Michael trips over and then the cake falls into his face. Uh, yeah. And uh, the real horror is Michael being unborn because um, he is going through a lot, loads of things. He's uh, about to hit a one-year-old, and then he, and then the, the next day when he's gonna wake up, he's gonna be no longer existing. He's gonna be stuck in the mud in his mom's womb, and then uh, he'd be gone. So yeah, the scariness is really high up. So yeah, in terms of scares, uh, I guess. Um, even though I love Terra Tower, I think I go to Kakadu because I think uh, being unborn is more scarier than actually getting amnesia. Who agrees? Comment down the comment down below on if you agree if uh, if being unborn is much more scary than having amnesia or being chased by a man. I mean, or being chased by a murderer. So, anyway, so let's move on with um, what's next? The time travel section. So yeah, both books involve time travel and. You may think this book is not time travel, I mean Terra Tower, because the, look at the cover. Does it scream time travel? Uh, no, it doesn't. But when you really read the book, there is a time travel section in the third act, where Eddie and Sue end up, I think, in the 1800s, 1600s? I forgot the year, but yeah, they definitely went to the past. And it's definitely not the 20th century. So, they go... So they pretty much uh, go to... The, uh, the pretty much the time travel section is pretty much the third act. Uh, I think the time travel section is actually kind of like a, um, I wish it was some, um, I mean the time travel section is actually pretty good, but for me it's not really like too much. I actually really like time travel stories, that's what, I think why I like Back to the Future so much. And uh, so yeah, the overall the time travel section in Terra Tower is just decent, I guess. Um, it's a uh, the book is really good, but the time travel section, I think, uh, needs to happen a little bit early. Mm, that, um, I, I kind of wish this book was a bit longer so that we have more time with the time travel section. So that uh, we can develop more with the characters uh, just saying because I love this book so much. I know. I don't know why, but yeah. So, the Kuku uh time travel part is really like most of the book, which is actually pretty good. I really like time travel segments where Michael is experiencing all the bad moments in his life. So yeah, in terms of the time travel, I'd say Kuku Kakadum easily wins out. Terra Tower happens a little bit too late in terms of the time travel section, but yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. Let's head up with the conclusion. So, in terms of the very endings, so, so overall Terra Tower is, is a great, 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 great read. I love the book, it's very well written, the characters are likable, the villain executioner is great, Horror is really well written, and the scares are very high enough. Uh, Kuwaka Doom, yes, it's scary. It's pretty scary. Uh, it doesn't even need to have an antagonist. It's already scary enough. No, I mean, it didn't, it didn't really goosebumps or anything. I didn't get creeped out or anything. Just 
it's kind of scary. And if you're in a situation of this kid, um, but the Kuko Kodum definitely fails in the story and definitely fails a lot in the characters. And uh, there's some moments in the book that are just kind, kind of just okay, I guess. There are some uh, moments in the book that are just a bit slow, in my opinion, and uh, it kind of looks. I kind of wish that there's some moments a bit there. Kind of need to delete. Uh, yeah. The moments that need to be deleted, to be deleted are the part where Michael gets uh, his uh, shoe untied. It gets his uh, shoe tied up. Uh, that part um, doesn't really serve too much of a purpose. And um, maybe some other scenes I forgot, but yeah. So yeah, overall I give the Terror Tower a 10 out of 10. Even though the third act, the time travel bits, I think I need, I need to be a little bit longer. Uh, I project, I definitely prefer Terror Tower. So Terror Tower is definitely the preferred book. Even though Kukwaka Dumas is very scary and very time travel bits, I have to admit the scary and Terror Tower are pretty well affected, which made which made it a 10. Yeah. It's definitely my top 10 favorite business books. This one is definitely one of the worst books that are released in the retro tins. Like, due to how mean spirit it is, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's probably the reason why I don't really like this book as much as the other ones in the retro tins. It's because it's a bit mean spirited. But um But that doesn't mean it's not a good, bad book. It's definitely a good read. So yeah, overall I give this book uh, uh, a high a high eight out of ten. It's a bit it's uh I mean a strong eight out of ten, yeah. It's a definitely a strong eight out of ten. It's not getting the low eight it's not getting a high eight. It's definitely in the middle of the eight out of ten. Yeah, it's definitely staying as an 8 out of 10. Definitely one of the better, one of the, definitely the worst time, one of the worst time travel books in the usual series. But, hey, I think this is good. So, which uh, do you prefer, guys? Uh, Terra Tower or Kukoka Doom? I know you might think I'm unfair because I, because I gave two points for this, and I gave two points for this. But, uh, let me know that, uh, I prefer Terra Tower because, um, this, because uh, A, story is better, B, characters are better, and uh, C, the scares are, are pretty good, even though I think Kuwa could be much better scares. The scares made it high enough to, to a 10 out of 10. So yeah, comment down below. I'm sorry for I didn't uh, do a review of Kuwa Curse of Camp Cold Lake. We'll look at that video uh, tomorrow or maybe or maybe Thursday. Let's, uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see, maybe today is a Thursday. I don't really get out the dates, guys, because I don't really, I don't really put the, I pay attention to dates that much because every day plays out the same old thing. So yeah. Comment down below, tell me your thoughts on my, on my review and my thoughts on these two books. Uh, please tell me that, please comment down below, tell me your thoughts on both books. And uh, subscribe to the channel and if you want to check out my reviews of uh, these two books, just uh, uh, just know that I already did reviews on these two books already, so you can check them out. And, uh, sorry, I mean, bye guys. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't.